Hiya, and welcome back to Crying Dave's Misadventure. I mean, here's Advent, the game that teaches us that Dave cries. A lot. Anyways, let's just hop right in. Um, I will be holding down control a lot. At least in the beginning. Since it's all just the same as Max's route. It's, it's all just the same. Alright, do we have something to do first, or let's go? Ah, uh, yes. It is the best self-defense mechanism. Alright. Yeah, I have something else to take care of first. You guys mind waiting for me? Sure, we'll be we'll wait by the tavern. Just call any of us whenever you're ready to go. Just don't take too long, yeah? We don't got all day, or I guess Lady Spring don't got all day waiting for you. Well, in that case, this is the perfect time to show you a recipe I came up with the new chef. Ooh, that sounds neat. Let's go then. Didn't everyone here have breakfast already? That said, I don't mind an extra meal from Cody. Alright, I see everyone is on board. Let's go then. And so they all left for the tavern. Hmm, what should I do now? Hopefully there will be no crying this time, right? Alrighty. To the library. Head to the public library and spend some time on a random book we I grab you grabbed. Uh, gonna read the book. We're learning. God damn it. God damn it. Just all intelligence. Well, Dave isn't here, so we should be good. I did not think that through. I did not think that through. Check the request reminder. No pending available request. Crystal courier. No. WMA. Can't travel anywhere. Private broadcast. Cody. Oh, was this on? Oh, Dave, are you ready to join us? Yes. Yeah, I'm ready, Cody. Okay, wait by the lobby. We'll meet you there. You met up with the others at the lobby, raring to head out for the event. Hmm, she's here. I wonder what she's like in person. Guess we'll see soon enough. Before you moved along, you overheard a group of civilians talking amongst themselves. However, they didn't seem too pleased of what Elisa has to say. Sh God fucking damn. Oh, let's go. Do we want to overhear them again, or no? Now, all we have to do is go in front of the king, and we'll just cry. Cody had a puzzled yet curious look on his face as he walked away with the others. Yeah, all this is just the same. It's all just the same. We already read all this. It's all in Max's route. Hmm. I still don't understand a lot of things, but I do care for Dave's well-being a lot. I'll do my best to help him with whatever he needs. Well, I should head back to close up the tavern soon. I'll come with you then. Nah, that's nah, that's good then. Because there's something else I'd like you to help with too. Yeah, what's up? I'd like to try the, the recipe Elisa gave me. You're making Elisa's cake? G Yeah, yeah, that one's on me. That one's on me. Yes, or at least try to. 
Yeah, I did. Ew, now that's gonna be pretty interesting. C come on, guys, it's not that grand or impressive. Well, that's fine and all, but are you sure that won't take hours to finish, Cody? I'm all for appreciating something she gave us, but it's also unwise to stay up all night for it. Oh, don't worry, Max. It will take at most two hours. I also have all the ingredients in the pantry. All right, then. I'll take your word for it. Just make sure to send Dave back early, yeah? He needs as much rest as he can get. I'll let him know when I badly need sleep, Max. Don't worry about me. All right, all right. I guess I should be heading back. You guys are dismissed. Take care, everyone. That cake sounds like it'll turn out amazing. Can I have some tomorrow? Hey, save some for me as well. If it turns out amazing, I might actually order it from you every day. Guys, guys, calm down. I haven't even made it yet. But sure, if you guys come come by early in the morning, I'll have some slices ready. <laughs> it sounds like a plan. We'll hold you to that, Cody. Hey, why don't you come with us then? You could stick around for the cake. Yeah, well, I still have to head to the beach soon. Finn's waiting for me there. Sadly, I do have quite a bit of work left at, back at the lab. I also need to supervise Festin on the new documents, too. Just to name a few reasons why I couldn't accompany you. That's a shame. Well, at least we can see each other next morning, right? Of course. Yeah, that should be head enough. See you all. Until next time. Alice, to forget. Don't forget about the training tomorrow, Dave. I don't think I can at this point. Oh, we gotta remember? Let's go, Dave. Alright. Oh no. The tavern was still packed when you arrived. Lots of people were coming or was still coming around for dinner or just for a late night meal. Cody immediately excused himself to the kitchen while he helped Ashford with the customers out front. Thankfully, it seemed you had arrived at the tail end of the evening rush, as it only took about half an hour before most of the crowds dispersed. You went to clear out the last of the tables while the snow leopard rested close by. Whew! Thank good you and Cody returned! The new guy's amazing, but at times, I feel like just two of us couldn't handle the sheer amount of patrons in the evening. Huh, it didn't seem that bad when I worked with you guys. Why do you think there's so many people coming here to eat these days? That's a funny way to see it, Dave. Every man's got to eat, yes? What matters is the tavern getting as many patrons as it can service. Why they decided to come here is of little concern. Huh, laser-focused on making that money, aren't you? But of course, as I've said before, a diligent worker never loses focus. They will always strive for their goal, no matter what stands in their path. So, is that why I haven't seen you around much lately? You've just been that busy, huh? But, well, I suppose you may put it like that. <clears throat> yeah, that was on my end. That was on my end. Sorry about that. That was on my end. Yeah, stream died. Well, I suppose you may put it like that. <clears throat> I mean to say, I was always around, but I suppose with how hectic things have been in the city lately, I suppose one couldn't help being rather anxious. Oh, right. So, what's the new guy like? Uh, what's his name again? Ah, Tensai. He's a... Strange one. Strange? What do you mean? Oh, not in that way, just that he keeps to himself. I don't believe I've ever seen him around the city before. Really? Mm-hmm. But I suppose with how many people coming in and out of Crystal Coast every day, it's not hard to come across foreigners like him. You may not see it, but that's one of the things wrong with this place, Dave. Letting foreigners in so easy. So easily. Oh! Um... Mmm... Ah, uh, <laughs> that's not a good thing to say. Ashford, that's not a cash money thing. That's, uh, that's, that's actually, that's actually pretty, pretty fucked up, Ashford. Yeah, I get that they have their reasons, but still, that doesn't change the fact that it's pretty, pretty fucked up. Uh, I, I guess, that's a weird thing to say. Yeah, but I probably shouldn't pry. I should probably go check on Cody. 
Go on ahead. I'll join you in a moment. Okay. As you enter the kitchen, you notice the German Shepherd having quite the talk with Cody. His hands placed onto the bear's shoulders as the latter hung his head low in silence. So you better tell them when the cards were stacked against you. Maybe you ought to think about the cards you have now rather than the ones you were once dealt. Once again, I sincerely hope you think this through, Cody. Oh, speaking of the devil, here, one of them here is now. Welcome back, Dave. Hey, you guys ready to make that recipe yet? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, see in a moment. Tense I was helping me prep was helping me in preparing some of the ingredients listed here. If you could check the oven for me, that'd be appreciated, Dave. Sure, I'll take a look. You immediately helped Cody with the preparations as Ashford, Ashford promptly joined in. So you're saying you got this recipe from Lady Spring herself, is that right, boss? Yes, indeed. It was a big honor to receive something from her, let alone a recipe. I'm going to keep refreshing the page because I want it to be correct. You sure, Cody? I'm pressing X to doubt. Didn't work. Must be quite the phenomenal by the look. Must be quite phenomenal by the looks of it. Still, if I may, sir, how did you get this from Lady Spring? Well, uh, I don't think I can tell you much. It's confidential Mark stuff, Ash. Ah, I understand, sir. Well, let's get started then. Um, actually, Tan, Ash, are both of you okay with helping me? You two can clock out if you wish. It's already getting late, but I do it. And I do have Dave here to help me. Oh, that simply won't sit right with me, sir. You've already let us in on the recipe. It's only right for us to see, to help you see it through. I can go. Such a unique recipe must have quite the delectable end product. Hiya. I see. I guess it can't be helped then. Oh, God damn it. God damn it. We're having technical issues. What the fuck is going on? You've already let us in on the recipe. It's only right for us to help you see it through. I concur. Such a unique recipe must have quite the delectable end product. I see. I guess it can't be helped then. Alright, let's have a look. There's three things we need to prepare. The cake, the filling, and the buttercream. I fucking hate technical issues. Take your pick and I'll hand you the separate recipe. I'll hand you the cake if I may. I'm quite confident in my baking skills. Sure thing, here's the cake recipe. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, boss. I'll slip this right away. Well, what about you, Ash? What will it be? Hmm, I suppose I'll do the buttercream and decorating, sir. Alright, here's your recipe. Good luck, both of you. That leaves me with the feeling. Will you do me the honor, Dave? Alright, sure, let's do this. Well, it's just berries and sugar anyway. Shouldn't be too hard to make. And what about you? What will you be doing in the meantime? Just keep an eye on you guys so I can help if needs be. Sir, I'm sure you just want to taste test everything as we make it. No harm done there, no? He's our head chef, after all. No argument hit there. G guilty as charged. I guess. Heh. <laughs> well, there's only one recipe for each, so you guys will have to just memorize the steps. I'll be holding on to them in the meantime just to be safe. Right. Berries and cream, berries and cream. I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. Berries and cream. You looked at the recipe Cody just handed you. Uh. <laughs> Cody! Anyways, I'm just going to take a picture of it. I already forgot it. I already forgot it. Good thing I took a picture of it. Are you done reading the recipe, Dave? Yeah! Alright, I'll be holding on to the recipe for now. Good luck, Dave. God damn What deity did I piss off to deserve this fate? God damn it, Dave. Why are you crying this time? Mixes water and corn.
cornstarch. Right, give it a quick mix to combine. Then put forced berries and sugar into a saucepan and bring to a boil and stir once a while with a s and stir occasionally. All right, sounds about right. Then add Carrot fruit zest and juice. I think that was it. All right, now also add. Wait, hang on. Oh, it's this. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, okay, that, I think that's a mix done. Now what do I do next with the mix? We strain it. Okay, that takes care of the seeds. Do I cool it or heat it up again? We cool it. Okay, looks like I'm done. Ooh, right on cue, Dave. I think the others are nearly done. Well, that gives us some time to see if you've nailed the feeling. Let me see. You stepped aside as Cody took a spoon to sample the cake filling you just made. Mmm, ooh, that's stuff. Looks like you know it, Dave. The balance between sweet and tart is just, mwah, divine. Ooh, I'm glad I did it. Honestly, I didn't really know what I was doing. Just try to follow the recipe as closely as possible. And that's what did the trick, Dave. You don't always need elaborated methods. I, I guess. Still, I'm glad I got this right. I actually got a really good teacher after all. Oh, thanks, Dave. I'm really proud of you, too. I can smell the cake from here. Very fragrant. Quite so, boss. The recipe did call for quite a few floral ingredients, after all. It should also be ready in a few. Say, Dave, was that so hard to do? <laughs> yes! What? It was not hard to do at all, Dave. <laughs> yes, it was! <laughs> Anyways, should be ready in a few. That's great, and how's the buttercream, Ash? Coming up quite nicely, sir. It's firm enough for use. I'll separate it into, sep into different bowls and add the coloring for decoration. Then we're progressing smoothly. The creaming, is also the creaming filling is also d ready. Well then, boss, what which of us will be the lucky gent to assemble the cake? Well, that lucky gent will be me, Tan. Hmm, I guess that leaves us a few minutes to kill before the cake's ready. Clean your stations, everyone. Make sure there's enough room to do the assembling. At least he didn't piss himself again. After everyone's finished their respective tasks, Tensai brought out the cake and carefully placed it onto the middle station. Cody quickly began assembling the cake. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Cody quickly began assembling the cake, though you and the others still helped him with the frosting and decoration. And done. Cody exclaimed as he placed the last piece of cherry over the frosting. Well, what do you guys think? It turned out quite nicely, sir. Looks amazing. You and Ash decorated it well. Really well. I concur. Even the base alone was already quite delectable. I can only imagine that the completed cake has that cake tasting that much better. Alright, let's have a slice and find out. You grabbed some dessert plates as Cody carefully cut a slice for each of you. Everyone took a moment to admire the fruits of their labor before taking a spoonful. <coughs> The moist and fragrant sponge cake melted almost immediately in your mouth. The milky, creamy taste was mesmerizing, yet not too sweet. The floral aroma was quite strong, along with the tanginess that lingered in the aftertaste, but neither of which was too overbearing. It was very similar to Elisa's cake, though you could tell there were still some missing components that held it back from being perfectly identical. Still, all in all, it was a very good cake. A satisfying late evening dessert to end the day on. This is really good, Cody! I, I mean, Lady Spring's recipe sure hits different. I agree. This turned out really nicely, sir. Mmm, it's still not as good as her cake. It's not? We followed the recipe to a T, did we not, sir? Y yeah, I don't get it I either. What did we do wrong? Well, it's the hard to explain. But there are a lot of dishes that will always turn out differently, even if you follow the recipe as precisely as you can. 
Precisely. If I may, from my personal experience, sometimes even the smallest personal touch that the chef imparts on upon the dish can alone be what sets it apart. Yep, that's what I mean. Even so, even so, still a good end product. Nothing to scoff at. Yep, it's a damn good cake. Bet Alex would love to buy this from you every day, like he said. I, I guess. Ah, yeah, speaking of which, I should save some for him and Rye tomorrow. I'm sure they will enjoy it as much as we did, sir. I'd hope so. You then finished up your slices. Everyone cleaned up their stations thoroughly. Okay, that should be everything. Nice work, everyone. Job well done. Yay! Thanks, guys, for staying here this late with me. You may clock out for the day now. Always glad to be of service, sir. Well, if you don't mind, I'll be taking my leave now. Take care, all. See you tomorrow, Ash. He's sure in a hurry. Perhaps he has places to be. Quite a busy man he's been as of late. That's true. I hardly get to talk to him at the tavern these days. Well, what about you, Tan? You don't seem to be in a hurry. You look, you looked at, to the German Shepherd as he patiently put his personal belongings back into a humble leather pouch, unlike the Snow Leopard who was scrambling to grab his things before bolting out the back door. Mm, I suppose it's not as urgent to be. As long as I return to my lady before midnight, she'd remain pleased. Huh? Where are you staying, Tensai? Ah, oh, we have a place just outside the city. It's as nondescript as you can imagine. I'm afraid we merely moved here not long ago. You see, that makes sense. Truth be told, I don't even know where Ash stays once he's clocked out for the day. I guess it just never came up in conversation, and it's not like I would ever pry. Makes sense. Well, I'll be off as well. Take care, Dave and Cody. See you tomorrow. Well, I guess I should head back to the dorm as well. W wait, Dave. Yeah, Cody, what's up? Well, could you stay with me for a bit longer? I guess I have some things on my mind that I want to talk about. Ah, uh, well... Stay or leave? Actually, is it even a question? Is it even a goddamn question? Is it even a question? It is not a question. Sure, why not? The training's urgent, but not that urgent. I can sit and chat. No harm done in that. You sure, Dave? It might be too late for you to get back to the dorm and go to bed in time. I mean, maybe I can sleep somewhere around here? You, uh, got any space in your room, perhaps? Oh, uh, uh, well, my bed's probably too small to fit both of us, but I do have a spare mattress. That's fine, I don't mind sleeping on the ground. Uh, all right, if you say so. So, what is it you wanted to talk about? You sat down at the nearby counter as Cody joined your side. Hmm, us meeting Elisa today. Really got you thinking, huh? I guess. What's up? She seems like her normal self to me. Well, no, I was very excited to meet her, believe you me. But somehow, also seeing her makes me so stressed out. S stressed out? Yeah, like, just really anxious, and I d don't really know why. Um, is it something that happened to you guys from before? M maybe. But I mostly just felt unworthy to be in front of her, let alone being treated to a tape party like that. Cody, don't say that. Surely she welcomes you there as much as the rest of us, and what happened in the past, I'm sure it's already... W water under the bridge for her uh, i guess i just don't know dave i always feel like i'm no good that i don't belong here no matter how hard i worked how hard i tried and then having failed her directive seeing her like this i guess it just opened some old wounds it, is that why you were so quiet during the meeting i guess i was just too stressed out to say anything Hey, it's all right, Cody. Here. You lean in to give Cody a hug who could only respond rather weakly. Thanks. I'm here if you need someone to talk to. <laughs> I appreciate it, but usually I can manage. Just a drink or two would set me straight. If you want, you can just head back for now. I Come on, Cody. I want to keep you company. And I can drink too, you know. I'm not a kid. Y you can? Well, maybe not that much, but still. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. If anything, it's nice to have a drinking buddy to end the day with. Cody promptly went to fetch two shot glasses and a bottle of what you could only assume is vodka. He poured out in modest amounts. Cheers to our health. To our health. Go Whoa! Strong! <laughs> Definitely a lightweight, then. Guess I can't cheat my way through drinking. Actually, something I wanted to ask. Yeah? I keep hearing these nicknames about you, like Skull Shatterer, or 
uh, or was it Bone Crusher? I guess that's a result of me being indecisive. I just can't make up my mind on a single name, you see. Bone Crusher, Skull Shatter, or anything in between, it's just the same thing. Right, but what's the deal with that? Ah, that was back when I was a wrestler. Oh, so your stage name? Yeah, you can call it that. Actually, you just remind me of why I got that nickname in the first place. Ooh, do tell. Right, right, so where do I start? Cody then gave you some context as to how he became a wrestler by chance. He just happened by an audition scene in the Market District and was hired into the troupe. Since he was not doing so well with academy classes, he relied on this side act to vent a lot of stress and frustration, hence his aggressive demeanor on stage. So then this one time, I was paired with the Zavian guy. You don't remember anything... You don't remember anything else about him at all? Not really. We all wore masks to stay anonymous. So this guy, he actually packed a bunch of celery along his back, so it blended in with his feather nobody really noticed. And we agreed that I'd do a tackle, then throw him to the ground to make it look like I cracked his back or something. But I threw him a bit too hard that it crushed all the vegetables, and he let out the most agonizing scream ever. Is he okay? Thankfully, he was just doing that for show. It did hurt his back a little bit, but he walked it off just fine. So you're saying because of all that cracking sound, people thought you shattered his skull or his bones? At least that's what I imagine could have given people the idea. That's wild. I didn't know wrestling was more about acting than slapping people around. Oh, don't get it twisted, Dave. Even if it's kind of an act, you definitely need to be fit or very strong to survive. <laughs> well, I stand corrected. Uh, hmm. One more for the occasion. Um, mm, here. One more for the occasion. Bottoms up. The bear poured you another cup as you talked about various things. Mostly other incidents during Cody's wrestling career and how he transitioned into being a chef instead, after having met a fellow wrestler that was a cook for a restaurant in Hainan. It seemed that encounter gave him quite the inspiration to then come under apprenticeship of the previous owner of this tavern. Before you knew it, hours had already gone by and slowly your vision went blurry from intoxication. The last thing you remembered was trying to get off the stool, but you tripped and stumbled into either Cody or the counter and passed out. Oh no. We died. Damn it. Well, that's everything in Cody's route. Give me a minute. Alright. We're gonna keep going. Ah, you're awake, my friend. Alright, we have two left. Alex and Ray. Time for a poll. We're just going to do a quick poll. Yeah, probably. And start poll. Back to the Shiloh, wouldn't be my light if please don't leave me like this, they would think you were nice. Yes. <sighs> Back to the Shiloh, wouldn't be my light if Please don't see me like this. Stay with me through the night, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's Cat. I'll go help Alex. There's so much that I still don't really know, and maybe he can help with that. He might seem hard to approach, but a very knowledgeable guy like him could be shedding some lights on how I got here in the first place. If I could even approach him, that is. You took a turn to the back hallway when a red figure happened to pass by the same lobby. 
Ray! We waved to the dragon as he turned to you. Huh? Yeah, if it isn't Dave. Good morning. Good morning. Are you heading somewhere? Yeah, I'm going to see Alex for a bit. What about you? Well, I was thinking about going to his lab too, actually. Oh, really? Ray seemed surprised and you could vaguely see the concern in his eyes. Y yeah, I know he doesn't exactly trust me yet. But he's a learned type, right? If nothing else, I would like to stay around and learn from him more. <laughs> I see. If that's what you really want, then I respect that. The dragon smiled. I gotta say, though, Alex's knowledge in his field might be impeccable, but sometimes... How do I put this? He can be a bit difficult to deal with. Is that so? He didn't seem too harsh yesterday. Well... The dragon frowned, and you kind of wondered what's bothering him. Yeah, we're doing it now. We're, we're doing it now. Oh, mama! We're doing the update now. Well, the new route now. Eventually, he smiled again. Yeah, forget about it. If you feel like it, maybe try pinning him against the wall this time, yeah? What the fuck? You blushed. What? Your reaction earned a chuckle from Ray as well as a head pat from him. <laughs> Just messing with you. Well, let's get going then. I'll keep you company to his bunker. Bunker? Well, by bunker, I mean his lab. You know how it goes. All right. You both took the same path to the underground lab. The elevator ride felt shorter than last time, even though you and Ray didn't talk much. You could vaguely hear Alex's voice echoing as you walked along the corridor. It almost sounded like he was scolding someone. Ugh, not again. A mouse stumbled out of the lab as the door slid open. They briefly straightened their outfit before hurrying past you without a word. You didn't have time to see their face clearly, but they looked quite distressed, in tears even. When you turned around, the person had already taken the elevator and left. It was strange how the mouse didn't seem to notice both of you there, or maybe he just didn't want to talk right now. Wait there, Dave. The dragon briefly instructed you as you entered the lab. You quickly hid yourself behind the pile of books and lab, and lab documents at the first counter before peeking over the corner. Alex. Ray said and the lynx glared back almost immediately. Despite his small stature, he was very, very intimidating. Even Ray seemed a bit reluctant, scratching the back of his head as he approached Alex. You know what? I won't even talk about what just happened. So what did you need it before? The lynx left the hammer at the workbench and sat in his chair. I'm running low on Akai crystals. My last mage prototype weapon was accidentally destroyed by, the, by Festin. He made air quotes at accidentally. <laughs> this is why I can't trust him with any of my projects. He is clumsy and weak. Dozens of my prototypes were wrecked because he's too scatterbrained to handle them properly. Scatterbrained? Jeez, Alex, I know he's not the most skillful personnel around the lab, but you gotta stop being so hard on him. You know he's just trying his best. The Lynx didn't say anything, and Ray took a deep breath. Alright, I'll go get your crystals. How soon do you need them? In two days from now, I need it for another weapon prototype. Gotcha, I'll hand them over tomorrow evening. The dragon caressed the lynx's head, and you could have sworn hearing him purr. He quickly smacked Ray's hand away, his face a bit red. Rai? Yeah, we're doing Alex's route. Alex threw another glare at him, but only for a moment as he sighed. Alright, alright, I'll talk to Festin again. For the umpteenth time. <laughs> I'm glad to hear. How are you going for now? Rai, wait. The lynx almost yelped as the dragon left his side. Yeah? Stay safe. <laughs> you know I will. Alright, there's someone here that wants to see you. The dragon noticed you on his way out. Hmm? Oh, well, you know the drill. Whoever it is, they'll have to wait until I finish my work. Alex? Fine. Who is it then? You timidly stepped out of your hiding place as the dragon nudged your shoulder. G good morning, Alex! Oh, it's you again. What do you want? Alex! Ray sighed and the lynx seemed to stop himself. <clears throat> Is there anything you needed from my lab, Dave? Well, I would like to learn more about this world from you, actually. I was hoping maybe I could uncover my connections to Arboria, why and how I got here and whatnot. Is that it? You expected indifference from the Lynx, but he seemed somewhat intrigued by your reasons. Well, as you already know, I have little time to spare for matters outside the scopes of my projects. As such, I cannot afford to let just anybody into my work. So tell me, Dave, what can you offer me in exchange for the knowledge you seek? Um, well, I could help you around the lab. I might be a little clumsy, but I'm a fast learner. I'll do my best. I promise. Uh-huh, of course you will. As if I need another festin in my lab ruining all my progress for the month. He seemed to stop as Ray gave him the look again. Okay, you know what? 
The lynx rubbed his temples as he said, Having an extra pair of hands around here could be helpful. Just try not to break every break anything. Also, everything in this workplace is organized accordingly, so do make an effort not to misplace anything. And I mean anything. Have I made myself clear? Yes! I understand. We'll try my best. Well, well, now that that's settled, I'll be on my way. Have fun, you two. But not too much, I hope. Ray, stop talking about your penis. Alex sighed as the dragon finally left before returning to whatever he was doing at his desk. He stood frozen in place for a few minutes to process what just happened when he realized he hasn't said a word to you after Ray left. Um, so... <sighs> Back room. He said without looking away from the monitor. Uh huh? The books you want to check out are in my back room. He pressed something at the desk panel, and an empty shelf in the back retreat retracted into the wall, revealing a hidden tunnel. Oh! And like I said, don't break or misplace anything. When you're done, put 65... Not, put 60... Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save that code. Put 65, 76, 69, 88 on the door panel to leave. Try to remember, because after failed attempts, you'll get locked up and I'll have to come get you out later. Uh, maybe I should note that down somewhere. Uh, okay, I'll try to keep that in mind. As you should. Now go, and don't bother me until lunchtime. You hurried into the tunnel as you remotely closed the door behind you. He didn't exactly say, but maybe he sent you here because you wanted to be alone. Felt a little conflicted, but at least he didn't put you into a room rigged with traps. Right? After walking for a minute or so, you ended up in a spacious room about the size of a small warehouse. You looked around as several lamps gradually lit up the place. On one side were bookshelves stacked upon each other, like a personal archive of sorts. <laughs> on the other side were various machines, were various machine parts displayed on the racks and smaller shelves. You could hear a faint beeping in the back of the room. It looked like a computer to you. The screen was off, but you could vaguely see the light coming from within the casing. You sighed to yourself. Even though the Lynx gave you permission, you still felt like you weren't supposed to be here somehow. Alas, here I am. So what should I do to pass time? Uh, read some books from the archive, check off the tools and machinery, or look at the computer. <laughs> Alex! Alex! I don't exactly it's time read to drink a lot, water. but might as well, right? It's time to drink water. You gave it's a brief to look through water. the bookshelf. Some titles immediately grabbed your attention. It's time to drink water. Uh, which book? <sighs> Wait a minute. Ooh, Arborea. At least it was the first to tell me of its name. Such an interesting one for this world, if I do say so myself. You sat down at the couch after taking the book. You flipped through the table of contents and started reading. Light. Previous universe. Five fundamental forces. Seeing that the universe in question here was a cycle of Big Bang and Big Crunch. At some point during its, expans its expansion, the previous universe began to shrink into singularity before expanding rapidly again. But something doesn't quite add up. From what you can remember from the science class back in school, there were only four fundamental forces, gravitational, electromagnetic, weak, and strong nuclear forces. There are also speculations for the fifth force, but it seems to already exist from the beginning of Arborea. As you read further along the passage, this fifth force was described as sentience, also capable of communicating with the inhabitants of this universe through various means. It was categorized as magical energy, or mage for short, and was known for its ability to bend the four other forces to its will. This is how magic worked. Arborea as we know it today was formed approximately 4.5 million years ago. The people of Arborea were of many different types and classes of species, gaining sentience roughly the same time on different regions of the planet. The first sentient people had a tendency to bond with their respective kin, forming different prehistoric tribes representing their species. The rulers of those tribes were also the first magic users, people who can wield magic crystals and utilize its power. As magic users were very rare back then, those tribe leaders were deemed powerful figures, often referred to as descendants of God. This created social classes from the earliest days of civilization. In time, tribes became towns, and towns became kingdoms. As society progressed, war was also a very common occurrence, either from conquest, class warfare, or species tension. 
At some point during the many warring periods, people of the lower class realized their capability to wield magic, which was one of the cat catalysts leading to the modern revolution. Nowadays, magic is widely available, and almost all people can use the most basic elemental magic based on their affinities. Hmm, aside from the magic stuffs, it's quite similar to the old world. I guess conflict can happen anywhere after all, huh? rest of the book is kind of like an encyclopedia of existing kingdoms and countries in Arborea, as well as entries on diplomatic status of di different factions between continents, mostly politics. Ooh, there's also an ocean kingdom too, it seems. Interesting! There was a map folded along the last pages. The name seemed to be written in some sort of dated hieroglyphics that you couldn't read, so you didn't look at it for long. Eventually, you flipped, flipped to the addendum where a specific passage caught your attention. A peaceful era was achieved throughout the continents soon after the revolution. Treaties were formed between previous warring factions to maintain an everlasting peace in almost all modern settlements and civilizations. The reign of the evil king two decades ago changed all of this. Legend proclaimed that when, that when worlds collided, a hero will emerge in Arborea's darkest moments and bring salvation to us all. You sighed, closing the book. The last part was awfully similar to what Elisa talked about in the first weeks you spent at her home. I think that's enough for this book. Maybe I'll study the encyclopedia or ask Alex about the world map next time around. You get up to return the book to the shelf. The Gemol- uh, Which one? Do we want to stop reading or read Gemology or the space-time dimensional theory? Funny words, second one. Dimensional, right? Maybe this has something to do with how I got here. You sat back on the couch with the book, which looked quite old and a little tattered. You took extra care not to tear the book in half as you opened it. Written on the faded pages were scribbles of scientific formulae with sticky notes attached to them. Looks like Alex used this book a lot. Though lacking observable evidence, the existence of other physical dimensions is undeniable. One popular theory proposed the use of artificial crystal created through the combination of energy and elemental crystals to open cross-dimensional gateways to other worlds. Myths and urban legends of this phenomenon were commonplace from the earliest days of Arborea, from tales of ancient tribes visited by otherworldly strangers to proto-modern mages and alchemists attempting to, cr attempt to cross over to other dimensions. And there is yet to be evidence beyond reasonable doubt to back up this occurrence, until now. We stopped at the scribbling at the end of this paragraph. There was one of the notes Alex wrote there. This Dave person seems to have been transported here from his dimension via the aforementioned method. Traces of spatial energy was reported by Max's lady friend, though there is still considerable doubt to her claims given the lack of specialized equipment for accurate monitoring on her part. I'll have to get in contact with Dave to get more answers about how as to how he arrived in Arborea, if that were actually the case. He, he must be talking about Elisa. He's more invested in this matter than I thought. Alex's notes seem to cover up the following paragraphs that were supposed to debunk the cross-dimensional transportation theory. There's a common belief that other pocketed dimensions housing natural deposits of nether and ether crystal existed. This still remained, a lar this still remained largely a theory, as there has yet to be submitted evidence to guarantee their existence, which could explain the disappearance of a creature's mage post-mortem. Extensive monitoring of dying subjects have shown their mage dispersing gradually with traces of dimensional energy. This rule also applied to the infected, need more evidence and research, requ requests for live nether subjects were denied. We'll need to find better alternatives for experimentation soon. The rest of the book went in depth about dimensional theories, space-time continuum, curvatures, and related mumbo-jumbos. You could vaguely get the gist of it, but the more you tried to read, the more your head started to hurt. You returned the book to its rightful spot on the shelf with a long sigh. Gemology and ma of magic crystals and magical energy, or not reading. <laughs> Purple. Magic crystals? I always wanted to read more about magic. 
You leaned against the wall as you flipped the book open. Magic crystals are minerals that contain traces of resonating elements that can channel various types of magic depending on the specific affinity of the user. The three known types of magic crystals are energy, elemental, and nether. Energy crystals can generate, channel, and manipulate electromagnetic force and as such are mainly used to operate any pieces of machinery that require power. Although capable of providing unlimited clean energy, the production, deployment, and maintenance costs of energy crystals is a major deterring factor. A popular submission for alternatives was fossil fuel, energy sources made from combustible and substances. Though cheaper, was quickly deemed inefficient and can result in air pollution. Scholars also argued that energy crystals' high durability would make them suitable for long-term investments for a clean energy solution. Well, ain't that just neat? You chuckled to yourself, especially at how this would sound like a made-up fantasy back in your world. That explains the fresh air in the city. If only my old world had this kind of technology. Elemental crystals are mostly wielded by people to manipulate the elements to their will. The crystal will resonate with the user's elemental affinity to generate or manipulate forces of that specific element, much like the energy crystals that require polishing and proper placement to operate efficiently. Elemental crystals must also be polished and chiseled accordingly to ensure maximum resonance. Elemental affinity is innate to the people of Arborea and varies between different users, with the same logic the same logic applies to elemental crystals. If a user tries to wield a crystal of incompatible element, no effect will occur. Um, okay, that's an awful lot of specific steps just to use elemental magic. You scratch your head as you turn to the next page. Little are known about the origin and capabilities of nether crystals. However, evidence from many studies and experimentations have concluded that nether crystals can disrupt the harmony of, ma of magical energy, mage, of any affected living creatures. It has been proven that mage exists in every sentient beings, regardless of their magic capability. If the mage of a sentient creature is disrupted, their mind will be corroded and they will gradually revert to their feral impulses. Crystalline infection will first enter the afflicted through their bloodstream and begin to absorb any traces of mineral in their body, which can grow into visible patches on the person's skin. The visible nether shards of the infected can grow into fully spiked carapace if given the opportunity, such as feeding the person more crystals regardless of which type. Exposure to nether crystals can lead to infection, but not immediate corruption. Every sentient beings have their own defensive mechanisms to purge traces of nether infection from their body. However, repeated exposure and stimulant can breach the threshold, and only then would the individual become fully corrupted into a mindless zombie. The only exception to this rule is the Evil King, who is observed to have high resistance against nether infection, and as such has extensively used the crystals to subjugate crystalline beasts via unknown methods. You shuddered, thinking back to those fictional movies where humanity would end from a zombie apocalypse. You know it isn't exactly the same in this case, but the thought of it really sent chills down your spine. A fourth hypothetical type of crystal is known as the Ether Crystal, believed to be the antithesis to their nether counterpart. Where nether crystals would disrupt the harmony of mage, Ether Crystals would instead revert the disruption and restore the harmony of mage. This is purely speculations as there are currently no recorded evidence that suggests the existence of Ether Crystals. Yeah, right now we're in Alex's route. I just, I haven't updated the title yet. Also, welcome, hiya. The rest of the book was about technical specifications of the first two types of crystals, as well as how elemental affinities are hereditary. Okay, bye. You closed the book in silence before returning it to the shelf. You read all you could manage and decided to take a break for now. You still couldn't figure out how exactly you got here. Maybe someone took you through when you fell into that sewer, but that memory was already too hazy to you. And even if that was the case, why were you chosen of all people? All this thinking is making your head heavy, but at least the topics you looked into were interesting and you felt like you've opened your mind into a well of knowledge about this world. Check out the tools and machinery or look at the computer. Okay. There were several contraptions displayed on the smaller shelves. Most of them seemed to have rather complex mechanisms similar to clockwork, which is quite unlike the other things you've seen in his main lab. Maybe the Lynx had a fascination for steampunk stuff? Next to the tools rack was a catalog detailing the names and functions of said, said tools. Should I look into it? Yes or nah? I guess we're looking into it.
he spent a moment studying the catalog. While not exactly the same, many of them were quite similar to the stuff you've seen or have used back in your world. From tools that you polish and chisel crystals, to the multi-purpose stick that lets you perform maintenance on all sorts of devices and contraptions. There were a lot, but most of them were quite straightforward, so it didn't take long for you to memorize at least a few. This might come in handy when Alex needed your help with his prototypes, if he even trusted you that much. I guess we're looking at the computer now. Is this actually a computer? You asked yourself while eyeing the black screen. The keyboard seems to be a flat panel, something you've seen in those sci-fi movies. There are also no visible buttons on the casing either, though you eventually felt a button on the bottom of the screen after feeling around its edge for a moment. Should you press it? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to save. I'm going to save first. This is so coming back to bite me in the butt, but screw it. The screen lit up in an instant as you pressed the button. There seems to be a program already running. LSS config panel. Uh, let's go back. Well, yeah. Well, I guess not. Alex did warn me about this, so maybe I should leave well enough alone. Don't want to be on the same boat as that rat assistant. Yeah, I already did. You decided to step away for now. Alright, we're done here. Looked at the digital clock on the wall, which read 10 a.m. Oh, so about an hour away from lunchtime. Maybe it's okay for me to leave now. You quickly noticed the password panel next to the door as you went back through the tunnel. Um, uh... You froze for a moment as you stared at the numpad. You could almost remember it, but you weren't very confident about it now that you were second-guessing yourself. Oh, what's this? There was a note taped to the door. In case you forgot... Uh... Uh... <laughs> Good thing I saved it. My name, in all capitals, while judging by the handwriting, Alex definitely wrote this, whatever that's supposed to mean. Go up nervously as you add the password panel again. Here goes nothing. Uh, 65, 76, 69, 88. Oh. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Text to ASCII. My name equals password. Oh, okay. The panel screen beeped and blinked rapidly before resetting to its original state. Okay. Uh, 65, 76, 69, 88. The panel beeped as the door slid open. He left the tunnel to find Alex still working on something at his station. There were two boxes of food on his table. I hope you didn't do anything bad in there. Alex said, his eyes still glued to the monitor. Got what you're looking for? Well, I think so. There were three books that caught my eye. History of Arborea, Magic and Gems, and Dimensional Theory. They're all very informative, but I'm afraid it kind of left me with more questions than answers. You sighed, going over what you were about to say in your head. Maybe I could ask you for more explanations? If you're not busy, that is. <laughs> He grabbed one of the boxes as he looked at you, seemingly surprised. I suppose sparing you some of my time wouldn't hurt my progress too much. Now talk. You have until we finish this lunch. Uh, okay! You sat at the other desk with your food box. You opened your box as Alex did his and were greeted with not just one, but two dishes in separate compartments. One was some sort of diced poultry meat and vegetable stir-fry, which you just assumed to be chicken. The other meal looked like orange fried chicken served with rice and a sunny-side-up egg on top. Alex stopped whatever he was working on before grabbing a bottle of black sauce from his desk, desk and poured some onto his lunch. Links wasted no time as he took a spoonful for his first bite, and almost immediately you could see his eyes beaming with joy. With that, you were eager to dig in. You took a bite of the chicken stir-fry with the rice and egg. And with just a bite, you couldn't help but closing your eyes in pure bliss. The richness of the egg paired really well with the savory stir-fry. The, the sweet and citrusy orange chicken also balanced out the spicy diced chicken just as nicely. You don't exactly eat this much chicken in a meal, but you feel like you could have this all day long. No wonder Alex seemed to love his chicken so much. Enjoying yourself? You raised the links whilst eyeing you as you hungrily took a few more bites. Good to know the food of this world doesn't disappoint, but remember, the quicker you eat, the less time you'll have for our discussion. 
You not know, timidly as you slowed down. So go on. What have you learned so far? We're going to leave off here tonight. Well, I'm excited to see how Alex's route goes. So stay safe. Have a good night. And I will see you all tomorrow.